What's up? I'm Moncho back for another session of Get Schooled. You've been jonesing for a pretty face and a pop quiz? I'll admit, it's been a cruel, cruel summer without you guys. Well, you know how we do it. It's time for today's pop quiz. What are some of the vendor challenges in bringing 100 gig ethernet to market? A, there'll be a 40 gig and 100 gig standard for now. B, high cost and low demand. Or C, different rates, different reaches, and different interfaces. Don't know the answer? Don't worry. Sit back, relax, you know what time it is. Hi, I'm Dave Morphus, and I'm here today with Rick Younts. And the topic today we will talk about is 100 gigabit Ethernet. Rick, I think the first question is, what are the basic market drivers behind 100 gigabit Ethernet? Well, Dave, it depends on the type of network operator you are. Uh, the MSOs are saying a big uptick in demand for video on demand services and the popularity of high definition television, all its bandwidth demands at the same time, means they're going to be under a significant bandwidth crunch in the not too distant future. So they're very motivated to meet that problem with 100 gigabit ethernet in their networks. Uh, the traditional telecom suppliers though, uh, see, will see that as well as they begin to build out their video on demand networks. But they'll also see um, the demand for enter large enterprise services, that is high bit rate enterprise services at the access of 10 gig. In order for them to multiplex that and get that through their backbone networks, they're gonna need higher network interfaces and higher network transport speeds to do that efficiently. Um, and then lastly, the last kind of network operator, a little untraditional for us, but a large network, is the datacom centers. Those are huge networks and require very high speed to, uh, to get things switched from server to server. Uh, so they'll see a need for 100 gig as well, and actually the standards work that's underway right now is focused on the, that, that datacom short-reach short reach interface uh, to meet that need. Rick, you've established the market drivers for 100 giggy. So what are some of the vendor challenges in bringing it to market? Well, David, at this phase, we see a lot of complexity issues in building 100 gigabit ethernet interfaces. Um, and um, we know that it's feasible to build these interfaces. The question is, is what will the costs be? And we're looking at different technologies for different rates. I shouldn't say different rates, but rather different reaches. Those datacom center interfaces, those short reach interfaces, likely going to be multiple lasers uh, involved in it, multiple light sources. And so the challenge there is integrating arrays of lasers and receivers into photonic integrated circuits to bring down the cost in line with the needs. On the long range interfaces, the complexity is a little different. Uh, here you want a, a single light source so that that signal can be multiplexed with, on existing fiber with existing services on existing bandwidth plans. The challenge will be developing advanced modulation methods and uh, high, very high speed digital receivers to uh, compensate for all the impairments that are seen over those long ranges of fiber. Secondly, there's challenges in that uh, there will be two rates actually. Ethernet is typically grown in orders of magnitudes from 1 to 10 to 100 to 1 gig to 10 gig and now it's going to be a 40 gig and 100 gig standard is what it appears to be. So that adds a new wrinkle into the vendors uh, trying to build these interfaces. It'll cut the volumes down a little bit, uh, but it, it's, um, there's still demand for both those types of interfaces. And the, the reason for that, that uh, deviation at 40 gig was to really meet the needs in the data center where these low cost endpoint servers, uh, 100 gigabit is overkill for them. They need something uh, more cost effective and they don't need all that bandwidth. Uh, the compromise was 40 gigs, so we'll see both those interfaces in networking. What then is the state of the technology and what is Telabs doing in the way of 100 giggy? The state of the technology right now, well, in terms of standards goes, the standards are officially getting underway and that's happening at IEEE. They own Ethernet, they'll develop the standard. The ITU is supplying some requirements to the IEEE on how that standard ought to be crafted, but they're likely, the ITU that is, likely to wait let the IEEE lay the groundwork and then come in and make it fit within their OTN framework. In terms of vendors, they're in the stage of research and advanced feasibility work. 
a lot of different parameters being traded off in terms of cost versus performance, trying to find the best set of future technologies that meet the demand and the cost points. And then the last part would be Telabs. What's Telabs doing about this? And we're actively involved in 100 gigabit research at this, at this point, looking at advanced technology in terms of modulation methods, rece uh, receiver designs, and integrated photonics. And we're also readying our equipment so that it'll be 100 gig -E capable when the time arises. So Rick, we've established some market drivers and there are more coming obviously. So when do we expect 100 gig -E to really make its mark on the network? Well, Dave, the, st uh, the standard's just getting started. It's slated to finish in about 2010, 2011 at the latest. And normally you expect products maybe 18 months to 24 months later. In this case, the standard seems to be a little bit behind the times, behind the demand curve. And so I expect products and components to be co-developed with the standard and released just, just right after that point, 2010, 2011. Seriously, you didn't pick C, did you? Well, technically it's A and C, so I'll give you something for either answer. Wait a minute, I will? <laughs> if you missed the answer, your homework is to download the cheat sheet at inspirethenewlife.com. Come back for another pop quiz and a podcast party without the DJ. Yeah. <laughs>